Greetings, the Astro 30 here, and the escapade in the plus minus 30 volt power supply continues. Now, I haven't received the actual module kits to assemble yet, and it's been a rather long time, over a month. And I actually contacted the seller yesterday, and they told me to check the post office, which I did. They haven't seen anything so I've contacted the seller again um, they're very apologetic and they've agreed to ship me two new ones that of course was after I went on eBay and purchased another two for a, a completely different seller and so now I'm gonna end up with four of the bastards but <laughs> so Anyway, in the interim, I'm going to work on the hardware. Now, I've got this heatsink because what I was thinking of doing is mounting the two transistors on each board to the back of the case. And the there's the catalog number there. It's a HH8566 and it's a fairly decent sized heatsink. Um, yeah, this was about $17, I think it was, $14, something like that, uh, from JCAR. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. Is this is going to be mounted on the back panel. The transistors are going to go through with uh, some isolators because you don't want to have both the collectors of both transistors live to a chassis because they'll end up shorting stuff. Uh, and that should dissipate enough heat for 3 amps. Uh, I could do a power law conversion here, but I can't really be bothered right now. But uh, we'll put this to the side for a minute. Now, you're probably wondering what's in this box. Well, I decided to go... I've changed my mind probably about five times now. I've decided to go with a larger uh, aluminium enclosure and steel enclosure. It's 305 wide by roughly 300 deep and 88 high. And it's all metal. And I thought, well, because I'm going to mount this heatsink on the back, I don't want to use that plastic case in case, well, well, if I was to use the plastic case, I'd have to cut a piece of aluminium to mount this to anyway. And, well, to save some work, well, you know, just use a metal case. Also, I wanted to make sure that I had enough room in there for both transformers, both power uh, supply modules, uh, because when I was thinking about the other case that I was going to use, I was going to stack the two power supply modules on top of each other. Yeah, that meant bending the filter capacitors over at right angles to the board and they'd stick out the edge and then, yeah, it's just crap. So, what I've gone and done is bought this case, which is, it's a HB5556, and these are around about $59 to $60 from JCAR. So what I'm going to, what I'm interested in right now is, is opening the box and seeing what the case looks like fully assembled. Uh, because I've been uh, drinking a little tonight, and I'm not going to do anything but assemble account the uh, case and see what it looks like fully assembled. However, tomorrow I will actually go ahead and start drilling holes and, you know, front panel and back panel and mounting the uh, IEC socket, which reminds me, I'm going to need a power cord. So I went and bought one of those, that's about nine bucks worth. So I'll mount the IEC socket, the power switch, I'm going to need to buy a bigger stepper drill because the stepper drills that I've got, which are here, I thought this bigger one did up to 20 mil well I suppose that is 20 mil yeah it does do up to 20 mil so I might not actually have to buy a bigger one uh, because the second smaller size from 20 is 18 so the power switch that I've got requires about a 19 millimeter hole so I might get away with just this um, I bought these like three years ago on eBay for I think it was about 10 bucks for both of them. Um, and if I was to go to a hardware store, it probably cost me like 20 bucks for one of these. So I think I lucked out 
on the deal on that. So we'll see what happens. But right now, I'm going to open the box. And well, we've got a front and a back panel. A set of uh, assembly instructions, which you can't really see here because, well, the box takes up most of the room on the desk. So I will move the camera in a minute. We've got four mounting screws, four row of feet, which I will put on at the very last minute because I want to drill some holes in the top and bottom panels. Well, not the top panel, but the bottom panel. Um, now, the description of this on the uh, JCAR item is that it also includes facilities for mounting internal hardware without having to resort to drilling the bottom panel. Um, I cannot see that. I cannot see how that would even work because they don't even provide any hardware f f to uh, facilitate you doing that. So I'm still probably going to have to drill one of these panels. But I'm going to unpack the box, put, lay it out on the desk, and I'm going to just assemble it and see what it looks like. Okay, you can go over there, and I will take the top panel out. There's also these uh, two side panels, and of course, uh, bottom panel. So the box can piss off. Now what I'll start with is I will take off the plastic um, stuff so I can actually open it. In fact actually I might use a knife just to give me a bit of a hole. There we go. a uh, sort of like grey colour so I'm not really sure what to call that probably a gunmetal grey and it's got nice ventilation holes on it as well so yeah that should really look quite sexy when it's put together so next I'll do the sides I can figure out where an end is right there. I've actually had this case for about a week. Um, I was going to surprise you guys when I actually received my assembly modules, my kits to put together, but well, that's not going to happen now. And likelihood of seeing those modules is now going to be at least another two to three weeks. So, in the meantime, this is what I'm going to be doing. thinking that they go like this because they've got these little locator uh, holes that uh, sit in a lip that sticks up on either panel, uh, like the bottom or the top. There's only four screws, so if we look at this diagram down here, they go through each side panel into the top and bottom. So that's the only thing that holds it all together. So from what I can see, what I have to do here is this front and rear. Now there's also a hook here and here on either side panel. Uh, and it doesn't actually say in the instructions what that's for, but there is actually if we, uh, well, that one fell out. 
there's actually a little cut out here as well so I'm just wondering if these like hook into it which would probably make sense yeah they do so that's pretty much how that's going to be assembled so probably the easiest way to do this would be to <coughs> pull that back out and I'll move him to the side I don't know what I did with the other one, it's down there he's actually hooked them together whilst they're out plus I can I don't think it really matters which way up these go. Uh, so I'll hook that one in the front of here and at the back there. So that one fill out. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty much what it's supposed to be like. So then we bring in our bottom or top, it doesn't really matter which way around these are. this like that so yeah they slip the sides well the uh, sides slip down into the lip here to finish it and now I can see what they mean about facilities for mounting hardware without having to resort to drilling the case and I'll show you we look here we've actually got this side lip which sits five millimeters away from the actual bottom panel. Now that does actually give me an idea. I have a sheet of aluminium which I've had sitting around for another project for about two years. There's the catalogue number, it's an HM9500 and it just so happens to be just wide enough with five millimeters either side that if I was to cut this out I could actually lay that in the bottom of the case there on either side and put some screws through it to hold it so that means that A that will make this whole entire assembly square and rigid and also I can mount the transformers the power supply boards without having to drill the case and it doesn't really matter if I start covering up these ventilation holes. I can go up to this rail here if I wanted to. So I don't have to drill the bottom. I'm actually glad that I saved this piece from the warehouse before I uh, moved out. And um, it just means cutting it with a hacksaw and a file uh, to uh, remove the sharp edges. But yeah, I'm going to use that as the base plate to mount all the... Uh, hardware too. It's only two boards and two transformers. And I'm probably not going to use the whole entire sheet. Here's where the front panel ends. So I'm probably going to use oh, a good 250 millimeters of that. Maybe slightly more. But that's going to work out wonderful. So I'm happy about that. I was hoping it would fit because these sheets are only 295 by 295 they're not 300 by 300 yeah that'll be the next thing to do tomorrow is cut this out and I've got some bolts and nuts to mount it and I'm gonna have to go out to J-Car get some heat shrink tubing and everything else that I need and some wires and what I'm gonna do tomorrow is I'm going to drill the holes I've got the front panel designed I'm going to have to make a modification for it because it was done for the other case. So I'm going to have to size it up to roughly the size of this panel. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to print this at 305 long because the printer is on standard A4, which is 295 millimeters long. So there's going to be some edges there. It may look a bit crap. It may not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's going to be tomorrow's project is 
doing all the drilling, the cutting, the filing, the wiring and mounting this uh, piece of aluminium as a base plate to the two sides here at the bottom. So I've got stuff to mount transformers to and the power supply modules and I reckon this is going to be a great project when I'm finished. Uh, as I said in a previous video I was thinking about changing it to a metal case and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So now I can see how it goes together. And so I just drop the top panel on like so and then I just put two screws either side and there is a professional looking bench power supply. I'm not going to put the screws in right now because well I don't want to overstress the uh, holes and strip them out prematurely and speaking of the heatsink it'll sit just nicely on the rear this is the front because the ventilation holes are at the back but it'll sit nicely on the rear like that and uh, dissipate some wattage so uh, that's going to be tomorrow's project uh, what I might do first today is because I know I don't have to do any drilling on the bottom panel I'm going to put the feet on because well I can if I can ever get the stupid and bag open. So we'll remove the protective piece on the double sided tape and I'm going to leave drilling the heat sink out for the holes last when I've actually got the modules. It won't be too hard to drill them once the thing's assembled. So that's one. Stick in about 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter from the edge. So this is actually quite fun. It's like a Christmas present. I had a pretty crap Christmas actually. So yeah, and just so everyone knows, I've got some other kits and stuff coming. So uh, that some people might find interesting, some might not. So I've got some other projects lined up as well as this uh, but I really want to finalize this because I really hate starting something and then not being able to finish it simply because of delays and it's not going to slide around the desk so there we go so that's tomorrow's project is drilling out the front panel after I finished modifying the uh, label that I'm going to stick on the front panel to mark all the controls and, um, yeah, so we'll see you tomorrow.